Welcome friends to the class of marketing research and analysis. Uh, in the last class we discussed about uh, the introduction of marketing research, uh, how the relevance of marketing research and where it is basically utilized in which areas uh, people do research in the field of marketing. So, and uh, how marketing research has helped companies and uh, uh, helped in you know adding value. So, uh, today's lecture we will be discussing about the marketing research process. So, the marketing research process is like any research process. So, the only difference being that we are more focused on the marketing aspects and uh, not on uh, you know uh, other general ones. So, let us begin the uh, uh, lecture today with a small case right. So, that we understand what I mean by saying market research or marketing research right. So, this case is uh, basically linked as if you can see to a company called Colgate right. So, what is this uh, Colgate uh, has come up with a product called Colgate frozen entries ok. Now, what has happened to this product have you I think uh, you can think about it whether you have heard about it or not about this product ever. So, for uh, you know went into this frozen dinners as you can see here and in 1982 they came up with this frozen dinners. So, this toothpaste producer started uh, getting into the food section right. So, they thought of why not enter into since we are anyway you know uh, you know catering to the uh, mouth segment through toothpaste and toothbrush. So, why not uh, think about something connected to it which is uh, frozen uh, you know to dinners or food uh, food items. Thinking this Colgate uh, uh, entered into the frozen dinner market. They thought uh, maybe customers would enjoy chomping through a Colgate chicken and uh, peas dinner before cleaning their you know teeth with a pea sized dollop of Colgate toothpaste. So, some kind of closed system for the digestive system. Frankly, it was something very difficult to know what they were thinking actually. So, uh, this thought of Colgate to come up uh, to uh, get into the area of uh, dinner which they thought is connected with something the mouth and where already they are into the toothpaste. So, they thought there is a link between it. The expansion was unwise. Consumers had long associated Colgate with oral hygiene and they could not extend the brand association to products food products like dinners right. So, while clean teeth certainly are attractive and desirable toothpaste is not very appetizing as it says if you can understand. So, although Colgate was into uh, you know uh, hygiene cleaning your teeth and mouth, but that does not mean that people would do uh, would connect it with food which is uh, quite different from a you know uh, from a you know mouth uh, cleaner. So, customers uh, radically they, uh, they they did not accept the product and what happened was that this product of uh, frozen uh, you know foods that Colgate had entered into it became a failure right. Had Colgate why this uh, case we are discussing is because had Colgate done some marketing research they would have understood what understood what their consumers are thinking right, what consumers are perceiving, uh, what do they connect. So, if they could have understood this then maybe they would not have been in an urgency to come into this uh, you know new uh, food uh, product right. So, this is a lesson that one can learn that marketing research is very essential and vital for any company before they foray or they enter into a new product or you know new distribution or anything ok. So, what is this marketing research process how it starts? So, the first step of the marketing research process begins with problem identification. I have always been repeating in my class uh, very regularly that if a student or a researcher has understood his problem and can define the problem why define because understanding and define are two different things. You may understand something, but if you cannot define it if you cannot write it then there is something uh, still you know uh, very uh, something unclear right. So, defining the problem is the first challenge. So, and if you have defined your problem well you have really done your job well and you have made a good entry into the research process. So, that is the first starting point. Some people even say that if you have done your problem definition clearly then you have done 25 percent of your job of your research right. Second stage is research approach to develop the research approach what kind of research process would you you know uh, have how would you approach the problem what kind of uh, methods would you like to you know use in the study. The third stage is design of the research problem. Now, research design includes 
everything. Now, research design is basically termed as the blueprint of the research process. That means, it is the road map, right. It tells you what exactly who the sample is, what is the scale of uh, you know, how do I collect my data, uh, where do I collect my data from, what kind of a research study is this. So, everything, right. So, research design is basically the road map, the blueprint of the research study. Then you go for data collection as any study would have be it a qualitative study, be it a quantitative study, only the method of study may be the data collection might be different, but there is some kind of a data collection may be it is a let us say uh, a quantitative data through some survey or it could be a in depth interview where you take the opinion or a focus group study whatever it is. So, data collection then uh, once you have collected the data you prepare the data because when you get the data many a times you will see that the data is actually in a very raw form and when it is in a raw form it is very difficult to comprehend to understand it right. So, uh, data preparation is very challenging and very important if you are if you uh, if a researcher tries to avoid this step or tries to you know uh, take it less seriously in the future they might commit severe uh, mistakes right. So, data preparation and then data analysis finally is the research report that you make right. So, these are the steps of any marketing research process it looks like any general research process ok. Let us see how we classify the marketing research. Now, the classification of marketing research is done in two ways as you can see one called the problem identification research the other is called the problem solving research. Sometimes if you have if uh, you know marketers need to identify the problem. Now, what is the problem that I uh, is you know we are going through what is the company going through some problem. So, what is the problem for example, a study on market potential suppose let us imagine a company has started with a new product or for example, let us take the Colgate's case Colgate uh, had it uh, thought of is there a potential is there a potential market for it then maybe they would have been more clear ki whether this product should have been introduced or not. So, whether the product that we are making is it having a potential in the market needs to be studied. What is the image I am carrying now a very interesting I will tell you this uh, when uh, you know a company uh, uh, they did the research they found that interestingly the company is basically visa right. So, when visa did its research initially they found that the people had a image uh, of feminine image about them right. So, they were worried now they thought ki this image might hamper their uh, sales their you know uh, business. So, the company understanding this image effect they started you know sponsoring events like Wimbledon and uh, you know football uh, matches and all. So, that this image of female image uh, the which uh, was attached to them should be removed right market characteristics research, sales analysis research, forecasting right. So, these are some of the identification part right. Now, solving now to solve the suppose you understand the market characteristics, but the problem is how do I solve the problem. So, to do that may be segmentation research which segment of the market right which segment of the market uh, do people uh, uh, you know uh, are buying my product what is their feature what is their characteristics. For example, I will tell you this is a very interesting example of a company which was selling hair dyes. Now, hair dyes being a very popular uh, product the company imagined that they would have let us imagine some kind of a sales valued let us say x right. But to the surprise they found that the sales was going high right more than x. So, that was a, again element of research for them to understand ki why it is happening, why it, there is an uh, you know larger sales, ha, have we missed some segments, have we uh, not uh, taken into account a few segments, but these segments were contributing. So, to do that they asked a company uh, another uh, research company to do a research and find out ki which are the segments they have missed by chance. To the surprise they found that a, a place uh, which is basically a agricultural uh, you know uh, zone in India and not a very uh, uh, richly developed place was giving more sales than other places which they uh, thought of. The some company was surprised to know ki why is this happening how is it that a place which is poor and not very rich people are there and it is only agricultural zone. So, why it is uh, giving more uh, sales to, to understand that when they did further analysis they found that the interesting behavior was that this hair dyes were being used by this agriculturalists 
basically the people involved in agriculture they had one more profession which was basically cattle trading and in cattle trading buffalo was one of the pro, you know uh, uh, things that they were trading in the market so the buffalo's price was directly proportional to the prices to the uh, sorry to the color of the buffalo so if the buffalo looks more dark then it is fetching a higher price and this was the segment that this company had missed because now there was a large use of uh, hair dyes for improving the texture of the buffalo. Now, the company realized this and they thought ki this is also a potential area of business for them right. Similarly, product research what kind of product should be developed right for uh, solving the problems. What kind of price mechanism should we have Some, sometimes it is said that a wrong price is very dangerous because under value if you if you if you sell at a lesser price then you are losing profits if you sell at a higher price customers will go away so you need to research promotional research what kind of for example i talked about visa visa had a image of a uh, feminine image so now the company wanted to promote in a way so that this image of femininity is not linked to it and that is acceptable in both the uh, you know genders similarly distribution so, all these are the problem solving researchers ok, problem definition the first point. So, as you can see this cartoon right his thinking what is uh, the problem, what is the problem. So, when you are uh, thinking about the problem and if you can get us uh, you know idea ki what exactly you are working on and then you are you will be much clear. So, this is the first step is the very very most important step ok. So, how do you get to this problem definition? by answering a few questions who would need it first first question to be answered who would need my study my study if i am doing a research who is going to use it how it is going to be useful and for whom right second thing is okay if i have understood then i am thinking okay, what is needed to do this research how how should i proceed what are the things that i would require to conduct this study right to this research study third step is is this research to uh, should be done at any point of time no uh, or at a specific point of time because there could be some products which are seasonal in based some are uh, you know uh, over the year they run. So, the point is when should I be doing this research is time an important factor in this where the next question where where should I conduct is it because some studies might not be might be different for example, from place to place right. So, for example, in uh, international uh, marketing research especially you will see that the, the term place has a very uh, big relevance because we are generally affected by something called a self reference criteria SRC right. So, people tend to uh, think something in their own home markets and they try to extrapolate it to the other international markets which is very dangerous. So, if you feel something and then you try to extend it to some other markets then it becomes a clash of thinking process maybe because of the cultural differences right. So, in one culture what is good maybe in another culture it is considered bad the pronunciation or the you know the, the articulation it is bad. So, where you are doing the research why am I doing it why am I doing how what is basically the importance how many. So, for example, how many means how many samples should I be doing or how many studies should be do I doing so that I can validate and I say I can say okay, this is the study is universally true right. So, these questions if you can think and get some answer then you would be in a better position to define your problem. So, in defining the problem researchers should take into account the purpose of the study, the relevant background information, the information needed and how it will be used in decision making. Problem definition involves discussion with the decision makers, interviews with industry experts, analysis of data right secondary or primary analysis of data. Now, some sources let us see what are sources of research problem. So, this is something like I have taken from us uh, you know from the net only. So, this I like this uh, slide very much. So, uh, consultation with experts for example, you can uh, how do you uh, identify your sources of research problem through consultation of experts through maybe you had some personal experience for example, uh, you felt that uh, you know when you are purchasing some product you there is an uh, you know uh, status symbol or a kind of a taboo attached to it. So, that uh, has created a some problem or some you know whatever it is for advantage or uh, disadvantage for you. So, this kind of experiences right uh, then what does the literature say about it 
are there previous researchers which talk about such kind of problems existing theories. So, uh, this, uh, these are there is large number of uh, you know ways of identifying research problems. For example, sometimes the sales people in the uh, company they tell you about the problems in the market right. Sometimes while talking to your friends or your contemporaries or somebody when you talk you understand that there are certain problems in the market. For example, uh, uh, how would people react to a product which is uh, let us say considered to be dark in nature. So, how would this people uh, consider right. So, uh, so several things can uh, have a uh, can be a source of your research problem right. So, so let us see the uh, you know uh, how do I, I identify this research problem right. So, research problem identification first select your research area which research area you are interested in. For example, a person might be interested in the area of let us say product development right or product management. Another person might be interested in the area of let us say somewhere like for example, in the area of pricing right how to tackle pricing, how to find a new price. So, these kind of subjects right. Somebody can specifically say I am in interested in the area of let us say hospitality and tourism right. Somebody can say I, I am interested in the area of branding and uh, social media marketing. So, there are several areas that one can uh, select right. Then you read the literature, you follow several literature, recent literatures, what are the current events happening, what are the current researchers happening in this area right. So, once you do this review and all, then you limit to a certain topic right. All suppose you have uh, you have taken one topic let us say tourism and uh, in tourism then you break it to several you know you limit to several different parts of tourism and then you say maybe I am interested maybe tourism I have the three areas or four areas and I am interested maybe in this area because I see it to be more uh, interesting and uh, uh, there are more literature available and maybe I can also get the data easily. So, that is why you are interested. So, finally, you evaluate the final research problem and then formulate the statement right. So, this is how you structure the uh, pro identification of the problem. Just look at some topics which I have brought for your benefit, some uh, marketing research topics. One of this uh, for example, I will talk uh, on this one especially right currently because uh, already I am I am working on it, but there are other. So, for what is this now pay what you want pricing. Now, the this pay what you want pricing, this is pay what you want pricing. This is a uh, method where uh, we say that instead of an MRP or a fixed price, a person can be given an option or a customer can be given an option to decide his own price right. So, will this mechanism work at the initial uh, or uh, you know onset everybody uh, might react and say okay, well no this is not going to work right. But then we cannot say at the moment because there are some uh, you know cases where it has been tried and they have been found to be successful right. So, uh, can we take it and by uh, studying this can we say that uh, maybe we were losing more money because people are see why do you uh, want to do this research because pricing is fixed because the company feels at least I should get this much right. But what if if we understand that human behavior is if human behavior is so benevolent that they would try to pay you give you more given an option rather than less if that is true that would have, been, would have been true then in such a condition pay what you want pricing can give you give more benefits to a company at least a service oriented company or something than a fixed price because in fixed price you are limiting yourself let us say right. So, this is to be checked. So, I am working at the current uh, currently on this topic at the moment right with one of our PhD scholars cause related marketing. For example, you must have seen that companies say if you buy this good then 1 rupee goes to the girl child's education or some orphanage or something. So, when you are connected with some causes does it uh, does it add to the sales right destination tourism right. Now, how is uh, tourism affected by the personality of the destination or the place right. So, such kind of studies event marketing right. So, potential of yoga or spiritual tourism in a country like India especially where we are the pioneers of uh, spiritual tourism and yoga right. Customer engagement behavioral patterns of women travelers does it have an effect yes it can have it because the government maybe can build infrastructure and uh, let us say uh, you know 
uh, infrastructure on basis of the behavioral patterns of the travelers uh, women travelers. So, this is an area of research which I am also interested now currently I am working. Green energy marketing, social media marketing. So, you can see that this is only a few to tell you see how marketing research problems are different from other problems and how they are more connected to uh, the business economy at large. Okay. Let us take this case. This case has been uh, for, is a, for a company called Lego. I hope many of you have heard about Lego. So, it makes toys basically. Lego has been for boys for many years. They wanted to come with products for girls, right. They made a survey of 3500 girls along with their mothers for 4 years and they studied extensively the habits of the girls, right. How do girls choose their dolls or their choose their you know uh, playing uh, items? Lego came out with a new line of toys on January 1st, 2012. This line was called Friends. Okay. What change did they make? The brick colors for this line of products that means Friends were changed to more vibrant colors because girls were uh, favoring more vibrant colors and the packaging also changed along with the uh, figurines included in the set. Right? Figurines were made to be slightly bigger. Earlier uh, what was happening was uh, since boys do not need extra accessories like hair brushes and purses, but girls wanted it. So, they wanted to make it little uh, bigger in size, so that the girls could keep their uh, necessary stuff in it and they could use it for the benefit. So, when they made these small changes, uh, Lego could come out with a uh, new line of products for the especially the girls. So, this increased their market dramatically. So, here this is for a company, uh, this is one research, but if a researcher as an academician can you if you think, then you can understand that this study is nothing but a, a study on the pattern of the girls behavioral pattern, right. How do small girls or you know teenage girls buy their uh, uh, toys, right and what, what behavioral uh, uh, patterns influence their uh, buying pattern, right. Okay. So, the st first step was to identify the research problem. We have. So, the second step is to develop an approach to the problem. So, how do you develop an approach? You can have your theoretical foundations, right. So, from necessarily some several classical theories and all you can get affected, you can get connected and you can think of. You can have analytical models like verbal models, graphical models, mathematical models which are like in a form of equation or something, right. Develop research questions, develop hypothesis and specification of the information, what kind of information I need. When you, uh, when you are thinking of a problem, you can think of a problem in these ways, right. So, if, if you are clear what is my objective of the study, what is my research question, what kind of a model I am going to build about it. So, if you are more clear about it, then your process of doing a research will be simpler. Another case I have introduced here. So, to understand the research problem, Kellogg's which is the world's leading producer of cereal and leading producer of convenience foods, right, faced a slump in the market. The cereal sales were declining and it had to face the challenges of getting out of its slump. So, they wanted to increase their sales basically. To identify the problem, Kellogg's spoke to the decision maker within the company, interviewed industry experts and conducted some analysis. Interestingly, some of the issues that came out of the research such as the current products were targeted to kids. High prices were turning consumers to generic brands because Kellogg's products were considered to be high priced, people were moving to more generic brands. Okay. Adults who were uh, their targets also, they wanted quick foods that require very little or no preparation. So, all these things when uh, Kellogg's understood, they understood that they need to change the way they approach the problem. right? If they do not uh, change their uh, approach, then they would not be able to improve their sales. Right? What kind of a design do you need? When you have understood my research, your research problem, what kind of a design do you need? Right? So, design is a, as I said is the path. So, when you talk about the path, so this path tells you about everything. It connects, it, it does not, it helps you to not to digress from, from this path to other areas maybe you know outside. So, it limits you to this path only right so it helps you to plan structure and strategize the research basically it is a blueprint that will guide the research process how do you want to proceed with the research what kind of things you should be keeping in mind while you are uh, moving ahead 
So, doing uh, when we discuss about this uh, research design there are few for example, exploratory research design, conclusive research design which is divided into two parts right causal and descriptive research design okay. and again you have descriptive research design can be divided into cross sectional and longitudinal. So, these are some of the ways you conduct the research design. So, we will uh, explain I will explain one of uh, each one of them, but already my few go to my the series of lectures of my first course on marketing research and analysis there I had dealt it in deep uh, deeply, but however, I will spend little time on this here also because some people might be new to this uh, course. So, here I will explain what is the exploratory research design and what is a conclusive research design and what do you mean by cross sectional and longitudinal designs basically right. So, uh, what I will do is I will take it up in the next uh, you know uh, class and uh, I will stop it here. So, for today we will uh, we can understand that what we have done is we have understood the marketing research process and uh, the steps that you need to keep in mind and how they are important right. Uh, well, thank you very much for the class, I wish you all the best.